suckered myself into a fucking stupid position and I've had to put the engine on to get out of it. The wind got up, this is an hour's block, the wind got up so I thought oh having you know having had some contact from people saying oh you're alright when I wasn't moving I talked myself in to moving so when the wind got up I thought I'll make some progress and then everyone who's watching on the map will know oh he's all right look he's making good progress again unfortunately the good progress again took me closer and closer to the shipping lanes closer and closer to the shipping lanes and then the wind died and now I'm here with no wind and I've got traffic it's going to be a collision um, not not going to be a collision it's going to be a collision risk so my only option was to put the engine on and drive away if we look here so I was right in front of this guy here uh, with no wind and going nowhere so I had to put the engine on and make a beeline 30 degrees off to get out of his way and there's the rest of the traffic that's the traffic lanes and I was kind of over here and got some wind came down came down lost the wind completely so there's a lesson there disregard everything every outside input you get from people who are not on the scene at the time and make your own decisions based on all of the facts that you have now if other people want to give you facts that's fine but when they I don't want to say second guess you but when they influence your decisions based on no other information then you're just asking for your decision to be to be shifted to be risky shifted away from something that you an assessment that you made based on all of the facts that you have to adding something else which isn't significant i.e. oh some other people might be worried which which I allowed myself to be talked into doing something that was more risky than the comfortable position I was in and I'm at the moment feeling really fucking angry with myself for allowing that to happen but I will be fine in five minutes time um, but yeah good it's day seven actually it's day seven and a half now so uh, it's just approaching uh, 1800 Zulu, 6 o'clock in the evening Zulu time, uh, it's 7 o'clock in the evening, local time and I left Falmouth at uh, 12 o'clock on, well I, I passed the Manacles point at 12 o'clock last Sunday so, 7 days of sea and uh, yeah, we've had a bit of everything because we've had a storm, we've had fog uh, fog and contacts nearby, blowing the horn do you remember the horn? Um, and becalmed, we've been becalmed, yesterday was becalmed most of the day um, and I made that little piece about decision making uh, and today was a significant day because unfortunately I don't have a proper fridge I've got a cool box um, but it takes a lot of electricity to keep it actually cool it's more electricity than I can afford I've just got 110 watts of solar power and uh, because the wind vane isn't working then the autopilot is taking all of the energy which means that everything in the fridge really needed eating almost everything there's some cheese which I think will last another day or two um, but uh, so well the only thing really was the bacon and I had three packs of bacon left bacon's a bit of a thing with me in ocean sailing um, so yeah, this morning I fried off 30 rashes of bacon, put them in a little Tupperware box and I've just been eating bacon all day. Frankly I'm happy if I don't eat bacon again on the trip and I won't because there is no bacon left. Yeah, um, that's Portugal over there. We're kind of at a beam uh, Porto now. And uh, yeah, and this weather's supposed to be like this. Well, maybe not the weather like this but the wind like this from the north for the next few days 
So that should get me round the corner, round the corner, Cape St. Vincent, um, and into the Bay of Cadiz, which is great. Who knows? We could be in Gibraltar in three, four days, three days. Uh, I don't want to say three days. Let's say four days. We could be in Gibraltar in four days. Maybe five. Five days is safe. Five days. In some days, we'll be in Gibraltar. I'm going to go with five. That will make a total of 12 days to Gibraltar, which would be spectacular, really. Uh, I'd be very, very happy with that. Um, we're not actually going to stop in Gibraltar unless something significant changes between now and then. Um, I've got a bit of fuel left. Well, I've got plenty of fuel left. And uh, I've got food for a month. Um, not m much milk. I'm for milk. Oh, Jesus, the milk. So, I made a decision that uh, instead of getting all UHT milk, which lasts forever, which is the right thing to do, on the morning, on last Sunday morning, I would go and get a four litres worth of fresh milk because it's nicer, it's, frankly, it's nicer. And I like having uh, the certain breakfast here, or ready breakfast, or porridge. Uh, and I like to have that in the mornings uh, when I'm being physically active. I wouldn't normally have it, but I can eat what I like on this trip because I'm so active. It's great. Uh, yeah, when I was a kid, I used to have it every morning before my paper round. It kept me going. So, and it's like a real comfort food. It makes me feel, you know, good. So I got plenty of ready brick and fresh milk to make it with. And those first three days coming across Biscay, they actually turned the fresh milk into curds and whey. I could have made butter out of it. It was all completely spoiled because it was churned up so much. It really was churned up into butter. Unbelievable. So I had to bin three liters of, uh, of milk means that I'm going to run out of milk before I run out of everything else uh, and that's a shame uh, I've got plenty of tea bags I can drink black tea I don't like black coffee much. But black tea I can just about eat drink uh, but that's the only thing really that I'm short of short of uh, I'm short of a wind vane because that thing is purely ornamental and I'm short of milk Otherwise, all is good. All is good. 